Well, greetings from Bernasconi Hills here in Southern California. These are the hills, uh, I say that in quotes because I consider them mountains, that surround Lake Paris. They're in a horseshoe shape, which made it a perfect candidate for a reservoir because we just had to build a dam on one side and fill it up with water. And that's what they did here, creating Lake Paris. So we're gonna look at some of the formations around here and see if we can find anything interesting. Won't you join me? But first, let's give you a little context, shall we? So here's a map of the Northern Peninsula Ranges in Southern California and the faults that run through it. You have the San Andreas Fault here, the San Jacinto Fault, and the Elsinore Fault turning into the Whittier Fault over here. And those faults break up the land into these three distinct blocks. You have the Santa Ana Mountains block over here. That's where I live. Uh, I'm working currently in Paris. I'm part of the Paris block right here. And then we have the San Jacinto Mountains block. Again, I'm working in the Paris block and I'm right near the Bernasconi Hills. That's that little horseshoe shape right there. Now, let's add some color to show you that the Northern Peninsula Ranges, which is all this, is not the same type of igneous rock. As you can see, there's different compositions of igneous rock here. And this makes sense because as the Farallon Plate was subducting, and sending up magma plumes, they were going through different materials. Starting here in the west, these plumes were going through more mafic materials. They were going through, it was more uh, mantle melt going through oceanic plate material. So on this side, the western zone is going to be more mafic in composition as a whole. There are exceptions. I'm in this transition zone. They actually call it the western zone, uh, western transition zone, eastern transition zone. Western transition zones all here. This is where the magma plumes are encountering a continental plate. So as you move from west to east, the composition goes from more mafic to more felsic as you go this way. And there are exceptions. But what's really special about the transition zone is that let's say you get a magma plume that's coming up that's felsic, it could be uh, rubbing against and melting an associated plume next to it that might be mafic. So you get these magma mixing things going on and that's what we have because we're again we're over here in this transition zone. So we're getting this type of stuff which is felsic as a whole but we have mafic enclaves throughout. So let's take a closer look at this intrusive igneous rock. From what I've read it's a biotite hornblende monzo granite. Let's get you a good shot of this. Look at the size of the minerals here. Beautiful, massive. Not pegmatitic, but definitely visible to the naked eye, right? <laughs> uh, it's a very handsome rock. And we got exfoliation going right there. See how it's spalling off. And if you look closely, you can see the mafic enclaves that are included within this igneous rock. And here's one near my rock hammer that is weathering out. But look at the contact zone between Monzo granite and the mafic enclave, which uh, I read is very rich in biotite and hornblende but surprisingly is only 10 percent less silica in that than this so uh, they conclude that these uh, are magma mixing events so that's pretty cool right you got the monzo granite and then you have these cute little enclaves that are in it right and I, i've seen this a, a million times but i want to show you something over here because something crazy was going on with this magma plume. It was interacting with something nearby and we almost have an enclave swarm over here. Let's go check it out. So here's a good view showcasing the biotite hornblende monza granite and we can appreciate that. It's pretty. We got a few cute enclaves in there but check this out. Holy smokes! Look at that. All right let's make some observations right. 
Okay, so the, the lighter colored rock is that Monzo granite. But as we can see, there's bits of other stuff within it. These are two different magmas mixing. I mean, you gotta imagine all this is a big liquid magma plume working its way up through the crust, coming in contact with other magma plumes potentially that haven't solidified yet. And so you, you got this mixing of magmas and you can clearly see that the darker or mafic enclaves are of a different composition than the lighter Monzo granite. And can't you also see that there's not many over here and there's not many over here. So you have this channel. You can almost feel the flow of this magma right here. Uh, some sort of pulse, right? Containing all these enclaves and it's getting sent up this channel and everything gets frozen and, and it just solidifies into what we see today. So this is an event uh, that happened around 100 million years ago this emplacement of all this magma, but we can see how dynamic this is. This isn't just a boring magma plume that just rises up and solidifies. No, it's got character. Look at that. It's, it's got a story behind it. You have mixing. You can see it. How beautiful is that? And check out this section right here, how concentrated the mafic enclaves are. Simply breathtaking. Here's a closer shot of that wall of Monzo granite with a ton of mafic enclaves. And I particularly like this section right here. Can't you just sense the direction of flow of that heat, right? Like imagine this is all a big liquid magma chamber and there's this pulse of heat Magmas are mixing, but you can definitely see that they're traveling this way, right? Looks like salmon going upstream, doesn't it? Beautiful. There's Lake Paris, but check out the enclaves here. How cool is that? Do you see anything interesting about these enclaves? Something caught my eye. Can you see that they're all smashed the same way? These are ellipsoidal enclaves. Normally they're just kind of blobby and we see those on that big wall of them, but not so here. These have been smashed, right? And can't you even see within the Monzo granite here, especially like right here, do you see a lineation, a line of the biotite and the hornblende kind of grouped together. It seems as if there was pressure coming this way and this way, smashing this up, creating the almost foliating uh, layers. I don't want to use the word layers because that's more sedimentary, but you can definitely see lines, foliating lines. And the enclaves also uh, kind of show the same thing, right? They're all smashed. Oh, I actually was reading, I actually love this description. They said, these are ellipsoidal or pancake shaped. <laughs> it's like, there's so many stupid words in geology that are so big, I try to remember, and then I'm like, ellipsoidal to pancake. Okay, I'll take pancake. And you can see that all these have been kind of smashed like pancakes. And this tells us another story that there was pressure. This was a dynamic magma plume. Yes, these enclaves got sent up, but while it was still ductile um, and, and malleable, uh, there was pushing and shoving going on and things were getting smashed, right? While it was still semi-liquid. So, and then it's been retained for us, for us to look at. So that, this is just so special to see these ellipsoidal, also 
attenuated. I've heard that enclaves, but I, I like pancake, pancake enclaves. We're going to go with that. Mafic pancakes. Get the syrup. So just look how dynamic this place is. So here you have the Monzo granite with blobby mafic enclaves. And then right next to it, you got the pancakes. Just shows you how closely you have different conditions. Obviously, same composition of Monzo granite mixed with these enclaves, but this section of the magma plume was put under pressure. Something pushed it, squeezed it this way to make those mafic enclaves turn into mafic pancakes. We even see evidence of differential weathering with these uh, mafic enclaves. You can see how the host rocks, the Monzo granite, is actually weathering a little quicker than the enclave. Probably has something to do with the mineral size, right? Large minerals like that, uh, water can get between them and, and pluck them off pretty easily. But these enclaves, the mineral sizes are much smaller, so I'm guessing a little more resistant to uh, weathering and erosion. Pretty cool. I just can't get enough of it. How about that, huh? Well, thanks for joining me as we briefly looked at the Biotite Hornblende Monzo Granite of the Bernasconi Hills here in Southern California with an amazing amount of mafic enclaves that are some showing flow patterns and some, which were turned into pancakes, showing pressure. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.